Great, good evening everyone. Um, I don't have a ton of time with you, so uh, hopefully it doesn't feel too rushed um, because the liturgical calendar can, can be kind of confusing. It's a lot to cover in one night and really just why we even do this thing we do. But um, first, I, wanna, yeah, I just want to kind of tell a little bit more about myself um, and, and why I find this really important. So as Melissa said, I grew up in Omaha. And one thing I think is important for you to know is that I did not grow up Catholic. Um, I grew up in a denomination called Disciples of Christ. I don't, is anyone familiar with Disciples of Christ in here? It's not super common um, in, in a lot of rural areas. Um, and it's, it's kind of a small denomination, uh, kind of loosely like a Methodist faith. Uh, there's liturgy in it, in the sense that like we follow the calendar like we do in the Catholic Church. Um, there's uh, kind of an order to the way that we do Sunday service. But every Disciples of Christ Church is different, meaning they're all autonomous. So they're governed uniquely and individually, which is very strange. <laughs> um, so I, I went through a deeper conversion when I was in high school, and I started going to um, evangelical churches through the rest of high school and the most of college. And then when I was 23 was when I first became uh, attracted to the Catholic Church. And one of the things that really attracted me to the Catholic faith was this sense of sacred and the sense of human. And I think that sounds like really uh, <laughs> like two extreme differences, right? The sacred and the human. Um, but that was something that I found so beautiful, the sense that there was um, a place that was set aside for worship. And it was, it was divine, and it was um, a place where we were reverent. And yet there was this real focus on my own humanity, right? On the fact that I uh, went through cycles where I was really joyful and times where I was really sad and that I had faults and failings and um, and I found a home for, for both of those different kind of aspects of life in the Catholic Church. Um, so I went through our CIA back in 2009 to 2010, so if you're counting, I actually have not even been Catholic a whole decade, um, coming up on my anniversary this Easter. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very grateful for so. For those of you who are going through the rite of Christian initiation, um, please know I've been in your shoes. I know that it's all a whirlwind. I remember I went to Franciscan University as soon as I became Catholic, and I was like, wait a second, I don't think I learned any of this, <laughs> and that just wasn't true. It just it kind of washes over you in the midst. Um, I want to invite you guys to ask questions. So raise your hands if you have questions because. Um, for those of you that even if you've been a lifelong Catholic, I know that sometimes you've just had this like burning, itching question of like, wait, why do we do that thing? Um, why does Father wear that pink color garment like just two times a year? Um, so this is a place for you to ask the questions. Know that I'm not going to, to judge you or think any worse of you um, because Listen, it's only been a few years ago that I was like, but why do people like candles, <laughs> right? Um, it's a learning process, this, this joy of being Catholic, it, it takes our lifetime. Um, so I get to talk to you, like I said, about the liturgical calendar, but first I really want to ground this, like, why does this matter? Why does the, does the fact that we have a calendar and dates and times and things, why does this all matter? And it's because of the liturgy itself, right? So can, does anyone know what the word liturgy means? This is the audience participation portion of the night. <laughs> anyone know what the word liturgy means? No, that's okay. Um, it means the, the public work, right? And in the case of the liturgy of the Catholic Church, what we're talking about is the work of God and our participation in it. So when we talk about the work of God, we're talking about what he did on our behalf. Um, particularly in his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. Um, this is the work that God has done for our salvation. It's the work that is still, um, in some kind of crazy sense, being done on our behalf. And when we participate in the liturgy, we participate uniquely in the work of God. right? And so the liturgical calendar is set up so as to help us participate. So throughout the course of the year, we're going through different feasts and seasons so that we can participate in this mystery, which I think is a really beautiful thing. Um, so have any of you ever seen uh, the movie, um, The Prince of Egypt? It's a, it's a DreamWorks movie, a few of you have? Okay, it's, it's probably my favorite animated film of all time. And uh, I think it's, it's just really beautiful, uh, very well done. But it tells the story of the exodus from Egypt. And there's this beautiful scene um, 
after Moses has continuously gone to Pharaoh and asked for him to let his people go so that they may worship God. Um, and Pharaoh, of course, refuses, and there's, there's all of the plagues that are put on the people of Egypt. Uh, we have the beautiful scene of the Passover, okay, where God um, tells Moses to tell the people that they are to slaughter a, a lamb, an unblemished lamb. They're to eat its flesh in its entirety, and they're to, to put the blood over the doors of their homes. And when they do this, God, the angel of God, as he passes through their town, he will pass over those homes, right? He will pass over those homes, and he will not smite the firstborn of their children. And any home upon which he does not find this blood, he will, um, he will take the firstborn son. And in the book of Exodus, after um, God tell, finished telling, finishes telling Moses that this is what the people are to do, he makes um, a command here. He says, this day will be a day of remembrance for you, which your future generations will celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord. You will celebrate it as a statute forever. So already, right here in the book of Exodus, we have a, a mandate that the people enter into a remembrance and um, kind of re-presentation of the feast that had just occurred. Right? And this is repeated, of course, in the book of Luke. Um, where Jesus, as he celebrates the Passover with his apostles, and he offers them his body and his blood, he says to do this in remembrance of me. Right? So Jesus, of course, becomes this Paschal lamb. He is the unblemished lamb who is slaughtered, who is eaten in its entirety. The blood is sprinkled on all of us so that the angel of the Lord can pass over us. Right. So we have, again, we have this command to enter into these sacred mysteries. Um, so... Why do we do this, again, at these appointed times? Why is it that like, we, have, um, we have Easter? Why do we have Christmas? Why do we have these kind of like, this weird layout of it? And the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us, in the course of the year, the church unfolds the whole mystery of Christ. Thus recalling the mysteries of the redemption, she opens up to the faithful the riches of her Lord's powers and merits, so that these are in some way made present in every age. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit more audience participation, and I want you guys at your tables to, we'll take just a few minutes, I want to, you guys to discuss with one another, what are some ways that your family um, kind of marked the passing of time as you were growing up, the traditions that you had. So, so some things, just to kind of give an idea of what I mean here. Um, my family, every Friday night, we had pizza and pop, and we watched TGIF and 2020. And 2020 was probably way too old for me because I remember this when I was like 12. But um, <laughs> this was our Friday night routine. Every Sunday we had a big family meal at 3 p.m. And my sisters and I, we got to take turns choosing who was going to make what meal. So there was even kind of a monthly cycle to our family meals. And my sister always wanted spaghetti sauce, and, which is probably why I'm not the biggest fan of spaghetti sauce. <laughs> um, we had um, every Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, we, we would... Uh, uh, decorate the Christmas tree, and we would fight. I would like to mark that as a family tradition of ours. Um, <laughs> so we had these different ways of, of kind of marking the time of the week and of the year. So I want you guys to just take a few minutes to talk about how you've done that. 